Welcome to uh, BS Works episode number five. And uh, I got Juan Brown with Blanco Lirio and, hey. and me. So we're going to talk about flat spins today. And uh, let's see, if I turn that off there. We're going to talk about flat spins. <clears throat> and let's see. In particular, that uh, uh, Barron crash in uh, Greenfield, Massachusetts, uh, on January fourteenth, this uh, this month, uh, you covered it, right, Juan? Yep. Yeah, I saw the video, and uh, you were talking about <clears throat> uh, you had that shot of the pits doing a uh, spin. Yeah. Yeah, and so uh, when I was watching that, I was thinking about doing uh, doing something on this uh, this accident anyway but when i saw that um it really it, it clicked the, because the problem is uh yeah he had power and that was a problem but it's a problem that's a big problem good yeah. i'm glad we agree on that i thought you were going to come up with some harebrained uh, counter power theory or something like that well it's not totally harebrained and there is a there is something there but uh what i was going to say is is that uh so Beach actually did test spin tests the Baron. They did 97 spins in the 55 model, and then they did 132 in the 58. And um, as far as I know, they never successfully recovered an uh, airplane in a spin <clears throat> with using a uh, uh, the standard spin recovery technique we talk about all the time. What you and I learned in uh, tweets. Mm -hmm. um, yep. The, they, they, it didn't work for them. And there's a reason why. So if you read what they say uh, to do, and uh, let's see, what I want to do is I want to share, there's a couple of things I want to share as I start, as I talk through all this. You got the manual there with you? I do. I've got the manual and some other stuff. And what I want to okay. show is uh, first, this is the flight path. I'm going to share that, talk about that real quick. So mm -hmm. what we see is, uh, it is obviously doing some maneuvering. It looks like some sort of steep turn uh, stuff. And then he ends up uh, north here, approaching Greenfield, where he's uh, pretty much level, climbs a little bit, and then starts slowing down drastically. And I think this either, I, I can't imagine it's doing stalls, honestly, but um, it's possible. I think it is more likely that, it, that they were doing a VMC. Um, uh, VMCA demo, and um, you talked. I, I talked about uh, blocking the rubber uh, yep. for when you're doing those in training, and that's actually what uh, uh, Beach recommends. They've got yeah. a safety communique where they they talk about doing just that. I don't know if you're aware of that. Yeah, but uh, it looks like that's what happened. And uh, the thing about it about it is, uh, if you depart the airplane with uh power if you stall it you've already got yaw with that right. difference of power so you're saying you, if you depart you, you depart controlled flight in other words if you stall yeah with the power on you got yaw and spades yeah and you immediately you're into a spin and with power especially if it's on the outside of the spin it's a pro spin input and it is going to be flat and given the uh the actual picture of the airplane on the ground uh, mm -hmm. it, was, it hit flat yep and so all those spins what is it 230 some odd spins nearly 230 spins that beach did the only thing that worked for them was again what we learned in tweets if you remember the spin prevent yeah idle neutral aft rudder stick recover yeah the That's spin the prevent spin is the part where you don't you don't actually you don't actually fully develop the spin or go more than one turn. Mm -hmm. now it's less than half a turn. You unload the airplane, yep. use coordinated rudder and aileron to stop the yaw and roll out of the uh, roll out of the the bank, and uh, then recover. So that's what the beach came up with is their spin recovery technique. And that's what you read in the book. Yeah, and I'll I'll show that here in just just a second as I try to manage all this stuff. So, 
So when I said uh, idle neutral app rudder stick recover, that's kind of the short version of the T37 complete spin recovery technique. Now, the T37 was unique in that it was designed specifically to get into and out of spins, but you had to do the procedure to recover from a spin. Generally, most light aircraft will almost come out of the spin by themselves because of their inherent stability. That was not the case in a T-37. If you just let go of the controls, it would continue to spin. So you had to do this rather somewhat elaborate procedure to get the T-37 out of the spin. And what Scott's talking about is the spin prevent to not get into the developed spin in the first place. Yeah, exactly. And so, and, and actually the spin prevent, uh, when I teach uh, UPRT, upset prevention recovery training, mm -hmm. the goal of UPRT is not spin training. We do spins to depart the airplane. The goal is to teach spin prevent as the uh, muscle memory go-to. In other words, I know that this is, a, the nose is slicing, uh, I'm departing the airplane, you do a spin prevent and it's not going to, it's not going to depart. And so this, what I got shared on the screen right now is the, uh, from the book for this airplane uh, is uh, VMCA notice. And I think you mentioned this has got to be 5,000 feet above the ground. Yeah. It's about 360 feet. They're about 450 ish when the uh, last ADSB hit. So he's 4,000 feet above the ground. And, and I think were they forced down there's some speculation as to whether they were forced down to that altitude because of weather that day. Was there an overcast that prevented them from getting any higher and remaining VFR? Uh, yeah, well, it was broken. It's broken 5,000 feet. Mm, there you go. So uh, winds from the uh, south at five and uh, the temperature is such, it was 31 degrees. So that means icing to me, 31 degrees mm. at the surface. So mm -hmm. that means icing in those clouds. If you're in them. Yeah, if you're in him. So he he was forced down uh, in because of that. So he sh but he shouldn't have been doing him. He didn't have the altitude to do it. But what I think we're the case I'm going to make here in a, in, throughout this video is what I'm the point I'm trying to make is that um, it's not a spin recovery. <laughs> you know, it 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 Beach came up with the real solution, and I'm going to tell you about a big twin that uh, does have a spin recovery, but anything trying to do that in a Baron or a 310 or anything like that, or uh, is as you're in test pilot mode. Yep. Because nobody's really done this. So if we look at what the, the you're supposed to do here is you're supposed to be at 84 knots. Um, you don't want to be anything below 84 knots. That's the minimum. That's your VM, the, the safe single engine speed and you're supposed to uh, approach this at one knot per second, so at a very slow descent or decel rate, and uh, you have one engine at idle, one at man maximum manifold pressure, and you're supposed to recover at the first uh, at the first sign of either VMCA, you see the speed, or you see a stall warning, which is three to five knots above, the nose is slicing, you recover. And let me uh, show real quick what the uh, recovery sequence is. And the other wild card in this situation is the student. What if the student does something wacky with the controls and instantly puts you in a compromised situation? That's something that we'll never know in these accidents because we don't have the data. We don't have the data. And I have taught in the Baron. And uh, to be honest with you, I was on pins and needles getting yeah. ready to do that. <laughs> Just right there, man, ready to jump on the controls. Yeah, it was not fun. All right, here we go. So here is the spin recovery. Uh, it doesn't make it super easy in Zoom to share your... Uh, you need your this. IT tech intern. Yeah. Hey Pete, get over here. <laughs> exactly. <with> this rig. <laughs> you need that to, to sort it out. Um, so I got it shows everything that's open on my desktop. So I gotta find it. Where did I put that thing? Yeah, exactly. Where did I put it? And like you mentioned in this latest accident, the terrain, the height of the terrain, I saw it, I think it was around six or eight hundred feet. So you subtract that and they were well 
under 5,000 feet, closer to 4,000 feet, maybe even a little less with actual room above the ground to work with. So, yes. So they put themselves in a very tight spot there doing that. And then, of course, having somebody in the back seat, FCG, that exacerbates the whole problem. It does. And I'm, I'm going to show you some stuff on that here in just a second. All right. Here we go. Let's share this. This is the this is the spin recovery uh, from the book. If a spinner is entered inadvertently, immediately move the control column full forward, apply full rotor opposite the direction of the spin, and reduce power on both engines to idle. That's immediately, and you want they want you to do it simultaneously as simultaneously as possible. And you hold that control position until the rotation stops. Then neutralize the controls, execute a smooth pull out, and uh, aileron should be neutral during recovery, okay? So that is the spin preview. Essentially, that's exactly what they used to teach us in the Air Force. So uh, the interesting thing is that, um, well, I wanna talk about something else first. Let's talk about uh, center pressure. Um, I can knock these off, get them out of my way. I think where, where Scott's going with this, if you miss the spin prevent and you get in a full developed spin, then what are you going to do? So oh, good. Here's exactly. Scott. That's where I'm going with that. If you, cause yeah. that's what it's a startle effect. If you don't pull that power to idle and you don't unload and have the opposite rudder right away within a quarter turn, you've departed the airplane. And with power, with full power in one engine and idle in the other, um, the, uh, the moments involved, and that's the key thing here in a twin. That's what makes a twin so much different. So let, let's talk real quick about this CG thing. So this picture shows you CG in relation to center of pressure, okay? And uh, that's really all I wanted to get out of this is to show you uh, where the CG is. And as you pitch the aircraft. Right. And uh, so this is where the rotation and where the CG is forward, is it, is it aft or is it in line with the center of pressure and where the airplane wants to rotate. The point being there is, is that when we're flying an airplane straight and level and cruise and stuff like that, or we're coordinated, um, everything's, everything's normal. Yeah. yeah. And, that, and the CG is basically, we can, you know, the CG is not a real point on the airplane. It's a range of uh, a, a summation of different mass items with their moment arms. So it's not a real point. And my, what I'm driving at here is, is that when you are spinning an airplane, um, it is not uh, no longer in the frame of reference that we're used to. It just, it just is, it, you're in a different frame of reference. And as that knows, it, it, it takes a while for an aircraft to stabilize in a spin and and that that nose is is coming up and down during that during that time period while it's seeking a stable yeah. and spin. actuality actuality it well the the definition of a, a spin is is the first turn is uh, a uh, um, it is the the incipient phase incipient phase right and it actually takes uh, more than that, it's it's two to three turns before you're in a fully developed spin. So the first turn is essentially, yeah, it's a spin, but it's the incipient phase. It's not fully developed. And different airplanes have different reactions to that based on uh, the, actually what we're going to talk about here. So this is the, this is from the FAA uh, pilot uh, knowledge book. And what I wanted to show you is, is this is what a spin looks like in the vertical axis. So when you think about this, uh, all those different CG things like big masses, like the engine out front or the fuel in the wings or somebody in the back seat or some baggage in the back, uh, those are mass moments. And uh, they all have an influence on, uh, uh, on what's going on. So um, let's see. So and the twin with it's all that weight outboard, you got two engines and fueled outboard of the engines. That's a huge moment arm that you're trying to overcome as compared to a single engine aircraft. Exactly. And that's the problem. That's the rub. Okay. How much rudder you have to, uh, to influence that. So this is a, I tucked at the wing on my, my airplane, Charlie, the aerobatic 
bonanza. Mm -hmm. And what we're going to see is, is the, the left wing, it's the only wing, the wing, the left wing that I tufted, but we're going to see it on the inside of the spin. And then we're going to see it on the outside of the spin. And I want you to see the difference. If you look at the FAA's POH or, you know, their pilot uh, knowledge man, uh, handbook, uh, it talks about the inside of the wing in a spin is less stalled and the outside uh, of the wing is uh, producing some lift. You're That's why it's that. spinning. <laughs> stall, and, <laughs> stall and yaw, the two ingredients of a spin and one wing is going to stall completely while the other one's still producing some lift, thus creating the spin. Yeah, and what you're going to see is, is that the, that outside wing is producing, the whole wing is producing lift. Mm -hmm. so so this, this is the inside. the inside. Okay. And uh, one of the reasons I did this is because of that VG on the on the wing, it does some interesting things. Uh, yeah, so look this, it, it, it's really very spin resistant, except for in, in this Bonanza. Here's the outside of the wing. So we saw how tough it, it was total chaos. Yeah, yeah. Now watch this. This is the incipient phase. Mm -hmm. It's deciding which wing's gonna. There, look oh, out yeah. the outside it, wing and then the inside reattached. Wing. The airflow's reattached. Look reattached. at that. Reattached. Yep, right away. Exactly. So that we saw the incipient phase and just, just shy of one turn, the whole wing is flying again. And what that means is, is that's your auto rotational moment. Yep. So this is what's keeping you in the spin. And that's yep. why you have to use rudder to stop it. Okay. So again, I did a video on this and it goes into more detail on what that wedge is all about. And what the wedge does is it actually changes the entire profile of uh, a spin in this airplane. Okay. Mm. And they did it. Uh, Beach did it originally because um, they, uh, they had the B36 TC, which had a, a barren wing and uh, they did some spin tests and they actually lost uh, an A36 in the spin test. Guy had to jump out mm -hmm. because he couldn't get it out of the spin. And uh, at the same time, they were upgrading the A36 to 550 engine. So they decided that uh, uh, Dennis Kreider is the guy who did this. Uh, and I did an interview with him last year at Oshkosh. Um, it was very, really very interesting. Anyway, what they ended up doing is putting that wedge on the outside of the wing. And in the A36 and the B36 TC, it makes it nearly um, spin proof. What is exactly does the wedge do for you or aerodynamically do for the wing? Excellent question. And uh, what it does is, is it, you saw the, it actually stalled first where the wedge is. Right. And what, ha what that does is it creates a stall fence that prevents any spanwise flow when and the outside tip of the wing continues to fly. It does not stall. Well, now I'm confused. I thought, you know, we wash in and wash out the wing so that with the, so the, the wing should stall at the root first. So you get the buffet over the tail and then uh, continue to fly towards the wing tip. So you got some ailerons, though. Don't use ailerons in slow flight. That just makes things worse. And now you're saying it does what? It does what? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I'll tell you what, let's play that again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's walk through that again. Okay. So what I want you to, let me hold on. I can actually. Is this the inside wing we're going to be talking about? Uh, yeah, this is, yeah, the inside wing. And I'm going to turn on, I got a little laser thing in Zoom. So, mm. right, you should see this. Yep, got it. Okay, so this is the wedge right here. And what By the way, that wedge commonly, well, I've thought it was just a place for the Bonanza owner to write checks for the airplane because they're so darn expensive. So that's where you <laughs> sit down there and write your checks on that wedge because it's right there at the right level. Yeah, that's that's a common thing I hear. But you know, when I hear it, I think about the people because I was in the Marine Corps, enlisted in the Marines. And when I hear people say that I was part of the Navy, that's I have exactly the same reaction when somebody says that's a, a check writing wedge. <laughs> <laughs> so but what here's what it's really supposed to be used for let's see how this what it's works. really for and uh the they actually had trouble in beach because the a36 and the b36 tc are, aren't supposed to do any stalls and spins and you know they're not supposed to do that stuff but the aerobatic bonanza is is the aerobatic bonanza wing uh, it's uh, stronger but uh is the air airfoil basically the same it's exactly the same uh, mm -hmm. It's a plus six minus three G airplane. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can show, I don't have it on the computer, so I can't really show it, but 
the spar carry through is the biggest difference. It's yeah. like two and a half times the size of a Got normal it. spar carry through. But back to the wedge here, um, it is uh, it is a vortex generator, and what it does is it creates a uh, V shaped vortex that goes from the side uh -huh. here over the aileron like this. And you mm -hmm. can see as we run through this, it happens pretty quickly, but you're gonna see the stall, it'll break here first. And this, you're gonna actually see reverse flow. Right. Okay, so it's gonna- and, so, and the whole idea of putting that wedge there is to prevent span-wise flow uh, continuation of the stall? Yeah, because most of the time you're gonna see in just about every wing that stalls down here, you're gonna see it stall here at the root and at the near the trailing edge. And then that progresses this way. Right. It'll happen fairly ra very rapidly, but you're going to see spanwise flow here on the outside of this wedge here from the uh, ve the the vortex that's created by that wedge. The uh, it will still fly. So you're okay. you're going if this whole corner, this whole section of the wingtip is still flying. Okay. Okay. So let's play it again. So we're approaching the stall. You can see it's starting to break. I can Boom. reverse flow. You can see that it's still flying. You get a little bit right there, but the the tip is still flying this whole time. Hmm. And you can see it. The boundary layer was attached. So the interesting thing is, is what's happening is that amount of a wing flying and producing lift is enough to zero out the auto rotational moment. From the outside wing, which is which is fully flying. Hmm. So the the, spin of the moment, moment arm that the that that amount of lift is way out there on the end of that moment arm. Yeah, exactly. And it's enough to zero out the moment arm, the 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 input, you know, that rolling input because of all that lift on the outside wing. And or at least it's enough to cancel it out so that you can control it with a rudder. Here's the interesting thing. So I do uh, when I do when I do spins in this airplane, and I do UPRT. I do uh, um, normal spin recovery, which is idle neutral left, rudder opposite, you know, rudder opposite to spin, you know, and then uh, um, neutralize recover from the dive, you know, you know all that stuff. The uh, and oh by the way, I, I actually the the uh, mantra or the bull face we had from T-37 from the Air Force guys is absolutely, to me, it's the best out there. Because what happens is it's an, if you have an inverted spin and you'd use PAR, you know, power, aileron, rudder, uh, elevator, um, the trouble is, is you did an inverted spin, your situ situation awareness is zero. Yeah, a, you are very confused. <laughs> very confused. And if you're in an inverted spin, then you're in big trouble. So I was, uh, uh, years ago, I was in the IEC and a member of the safety committee in International Aerobatic Club, the Competition Aerobatics. And uh, I was in the safety committee and we were, we did for about a year and a half, two years, we participated, were interested parties in accident investigations, you know, aerobatic airplanes. We okay. go and, and participate in that. I did about six of them. And um, <laughs> the, uh, the problem is, uh, if somebody gets confused, the that was, and pits in particular, if you're carrying a little bit of power and it's a two seater, you're probably aft CG, you're aft of the normal CG, and uh, with a little bit of power, uh, it's not a good situation. Okay, so gotta get that power off. Got to get the power off, absolutely. But so uh, if you're an inverted spin, and you go to um, the uh, actually, you go to Oshkosh. The IEC's building is named after the, the lady that this happened to. Um, she was in a spin. She had trouble recovering, and she did get out of a recovery. But she did a crossover spin, and a crossover spin is uh, like I've been teaching. And instead of getting out of the rudder, you know, they have the opposite rudder, and then they they elevate her over, and then you start to recover. But you're in that secondary stall regime. And yep. they pull too fast with the rudder there, it goes inverted and it goes out the direction. Yeah, you'll that's get right back. back into another spin. That's right. You're in another spin, but you're inverted. And mm -hmm. that's that is so confusing as to what you do here. 
So the, the thing, what happens in the Air Force idle neutral aft is you take all those pro spin inputs out. Ailerons are pro spin, except for in spin aileron. Out spin is pro spin. Uh, you pull the power back, okay, idle, power back, and because power is pro spin, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yep. And uh, aft, you go full aft. I'm going to talk about that here in a second. We look at the Baron. Um, if you, you need to expose the rudder, you stabilize the spin and you expose as much of the rudder as you can to the relative wind. And the relative wind is not like you think it is in normal flight. So mm-hmm. here's here we're in normal flight like this. The relative wind is going to be somewhere like this. But mm-hmm. in spin, it's like that. Mm-hmm. So you want to expose the rudder to as much relative wind as you can. But here's the other interesting thing is, is when you hold it aft, if you're inverted, the airplane will fall out of the inverted spin into an upright spin. Mm-hmm. So the bull face takes care of that. You know, I don't know what the hell's going on. And how do you recover from an inverted spin? Is it in, a, in it's opposite from a normal spin? Except well, I wouldn't say opposite, but you're it's opposite because of your your perception is messed up. You know, you have to done it a lot to actually uh, keep your SA, your situ, your wits about you when you're mm-hmm. So if you go idle neutral left and the airplane's inverted, it'll fall out of the inverted spin mm-hmm. and upright. And then everything's normal and it works fine. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's the, uh, that's the, and that's what that wedge is for. It's pretty interesting. Cool. Now about this thing about power, why it's so important to get the power off. Primarily, that's due to gyroscopic precession of the propellers. Um, 90 degree, gy- I want to get my wheel out and try this, you know, uh, with us tail dragger pilots. We pick up the tail and right away we we get a, a left turning tendency. Well, uh, in a spin, you add power, you're going to get a nose up tendency and flatten the spin. It flattens you're, the spin. You're exactly right. So what I got here is, is uh, years ago, I had an extra 300 L that I did the UPRT stuff with. And uh, uh, it's, it's a great airplane for competition aerobatics, et cetera. Um, it's a 10 G plus 10 G minus 10 G. You can really mm. hurt yourself in this airplane. <laughs> so, <That's 60. laughs> yeah. So what I did was, is I did a, this, this is an accelerated spin video and it's actually up on my channel. Uh, it was a while back, so it's kind of deep in uh, videos out there, but so, we're going to look at normal spin and we're going to talk about the different accelerated uh, uh, real uh, inputs. In other words, when you're spinning because the, the relative wind is no longer uh, in front of the wing, but it's below the airplane, then the inputs, aerodynamic inputs you put in are now gyroscopic. Make sense? Mm-hmm. Okay. So here's a normal spin, just normal, normal. Everything's to the left. So there's no confusion. And you're just going to see the, the departure happen here. And I just want to show you kind of a baseline of how it looks. It's pretty aggressive nose down. Mm-hmm. It stays down on that one. It doesn't come way up. Yeah. It's uh, somewhere around 70, 75 degrees. Mm-hmm. So the next one we're going to do, if I remember correctly, is going to be the outspin aileron. Yeah. I mean, inspin aileron. This is increased roll rate. This is the one that's actually not pro spin, but it looks like increased yaw. It's increased roll, but it looks like increased yaw right there. You see that? So you got left aileron in this one? Yeah, that was uh, left aileron, in spin aileron. And Mm -hmm. here's the, well, I'm going to talk about the strike eagle in a minute. Because this this whole thing about twins and mass moments is an issue. And that in spin aileron is what is the primary recovery control for a strike eagle in a spin. Mm. Well, we don't. (laughs) <laughs> we we don't want to teach strike eagle techniques to general aviation. I don't think. Well, I, the, what I said. Discussion. <laughs> the thing is, is is if you, I mean, if you're stuck in a flat spin, well, you can be a test pilot because you know you got to rest your life to figure that. <laughs> That's out. right. You got <laughs> a matter of seconds. Yeah. So um, uh, that's the troubles if you, and we're going to, sh- I'm going to show you why that's a problem. So here we go. This is going to be outspin aileron. And this outspin aileron is exactly the same effect as you noted for power. 
it flattens the flattens right it'll flatten so we're going to do a spin to the left here Every, all the spins are to the left okay so spin to the left with right aileron just makes right. the situation worse this is why it's so important to neutralize the ailerons absolutely so there's it is. Oh, there's yeah, I can see more horizon one. there. Yeah. yeah, look at that. You're oh, yeah, look at that. Spin. Wow, that's almost like adding power. Yeah, exactly. It's pro spin, and it tries yeah. to flatten the nose. It's a gyroscopic input. Hmm. Doing a, a, a flight control, and power is a, a gyroscopic input. Here's forward stick. Outspin aileron, forward stick. Right aileron and forward elevator. Correct. In a left spin. It stabilizes pretty, that. pretty flat yeah it's yeah this is how you do this is how you progress to doing flat spins and aerobatic airplanes like you see at airships this is how it's done so the next yeah, one the adding of the power next not next one is adding the power you're going to see that and again this is caused by the gyroscopic precession of the propeller and the engine right and it's because it's 90 degrees out from where it's applied and that right. all that does is bring the nose up it doesn't make it level to the horizon. The airplane doesn't know what the horizon frame of reference is. It just brings it up quite a bit. Yeah, and stabilizes it. You don't have much oscillation. Yeah. And here's the thing that's important, and this is why the, the, the barons have this issue or why that baron had the issue, is if you're in a flat spin, you have to change the inputs to the flat spin or you're not going to recover. Yeah, whatever's you causing that. Power. You've got to get the nose down into the cone of recovery. I mean, because you're falling. And so it, the only way you're going to reattach that flow is to get as vertical as you can. Yeah, that's true. And uh, so uh, <laughs> so what I want to show you now is, uh, let's see. I'll check the uh, peanut gallery here. How's let's it see. doing? <laughs> let's see. So, all right. Here is uh, here's an F one hundred and four, okay? Because uh, they oh actually... boy, oh, I gotta get into this. Holy, now this kids, this ain't nothing like general aviation, but this this is a thing. <laughs> this is a thing, and and uh, it has very very a lot of relevance here to what's happening with the Baron, yeah. with twins, and why they don't do spin tests and twins. So let's get that laser pointer thing going again. All right. Uh, Chuck Yeager did one of these. Actually, I've got the film. We're going to look at it here in oh, just good. after this. So what we have here is, you know, this is the, the cockpit, and there's a whole lot of avionics and a, a rudimentary radar up here. And this is all uh, fuselage for fuel. This is where the fuel is uh, stored, okay? Mm -hmm. And then the engine is from right about here to here, Okay. And uh, so the mass moment of it you're going to see is this. So this, we look at the spin axis right here, and it's rotating this direction. Um, and like those vectors, those vectors are to scale where the mass moment is. So unlike a twin, this aircraft has got the mass fore and aft instead of left and right. The that's larger. Right. That's exactly right. And what these do, okay, like I, I, that's why I want to talk about CG and a normal flight is you know we can add our baggage in the back and the baggage in the nose and people in the seats and all that we can figure out where the notional center of gravity of this thing is but if now you're spinning the frame of reference is totally different and each one of those masses has a moment arm to the spin axis mm -hmm. which is uh almost it is influenced by aerodynamics of the wing so you're going to see it somewhere uh, somewhere in relation to the wings. And in this airplane, it's, uh, I think this is pretty accurate. It's pretty close to, uh, to where the intakes start to come together. For the, it's a single engine airplane. So the mass moments here, as you can see, keep it in the spin. Mm -hmm. And they couple because- Yeah, the, it's a big time roll and yaw coupling exercise in these type of designs. Exactly. And the other interesting thing is, is it has a T-tail. And they did this for drag issues. And because of the little bitty wing here, they couldn't have a, a, a cruciform tail in the middle or one at the bottom because it would be blank completely. So they have it up here. And uh, um, what we're gonna see here is that video of supposedly Chuck Yeager. Uh, in that flat spin in the uh, subsequent bailout. And of course on the uh, 104 there, they had a full flying stabilator and that's what uh, 
Jaeger and all the guys figured out just to get through the speed of sound without losing control of the aircraft. Yeah. Because that sound barrier over a traditional elevator stabilizer design was causing a big enough sonic, um, uh, 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 what what's the word I'm looking for there? Sonic wave over that thing that they lost pitch control of the aircraft. And so uh, for the full flying stabilizer. The T, but that's also a problem with the T tail. Mm -hmm. Any T tail in a in a uh, King Air, you know, uh, Piper Aero. Some of them had T tails. Mm -hmm. Any T tail airplane, um, <laughs> airliners. Uh, it's it's a problem. Okay, this T tail right here in a spin. Now you're talking about a different problem. You're talking about the problem of a T tail in a spin. Okay, gotcha. Getting yeah. blanked out by the wings. Yeah, exactly. And that they relative wind shooting up this way. Yeah. So let's let's run this and we'll see what's going to happen here. Oh boy, that is flat as can be. Yeah, and you're going to see a little bit of isolation. He pops the chute, yeah. and the airplane finishes that. Ah, it's I mean, okay. goes, <laughs> let's go the other way. So yeah, it's, that's that roll coupling. Uh, He's got it pretty near down, straight down. Yeah. Let's the chute go. And there it goes again. You can't see uh, him trying to move the elevator, and it's not doing it. Yeah. Yeah. It's not bringing the nose up. And the airplane says, no, nope, no, nope, not going to do it. Uh, and this is what coupling does to you. And that's uh, why this is pretty much great. unrecoverable is because you don't you don't have any idea you cannot predict the performance uh with roll coupling like that so you don't want to stall that airplane and it just crashes yep just flat as a pancake uh, yeah, you just see that uh, no wow so that's some pretty quality uh video for back in the day they had some good camera on that test they had a good camera but it was uh, it's been uh enhanced oh, okay that is not original has been worked on. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's see. I did that one. Let me get rid of that. Okay. So let's see. Yeah, DX Plant asks a question. He's not an acro guy. He says, why do you want the stick aft? Why not just go full forward from the get-go? Well, that's what we're talking about, the spin prevent. Yeah, you go full forward on the prevent. Idle neutral aft rudder stick recover. That was the whole procedure for a T-37 in a fully developed spin. And again, like Scott said, that was part of that was to get uh, um, air movement over the rudder a bit better. Yeah, you gotta you gotta you gotta stabilize the spin effectively. Uh, so then you can uh, uh, then if because you're not gonna get many shots that recovery. So don't worry about memorizing that our T37 procedures or any of that. Stick with that spin prevent. Yeah, spin prevent is the goal. Yeah. Unless you're unless you're trying to do uh, aerobatics or something like that. Uh, that's the I just wanted to show this. This is the twin with the critical engine. Okay, we can see the moment arm uh, of the, the thrust producing part of the prop here and here. So the mm -hmm. right, right arm has the right engine in a prop airplane has more input into uh, roll this way, roll left in this case. It's Which the means the left engine is considered the critical engine because it's a more critical situation if you lose the left engine. If you lose it, yeah, because you, you're, you're running very narrow on uh, how much flight control you have to be able to stop any turn, et cetera. Uh, it's, if, it's, if it's the right engine that's operating and the left engine that's not. And of course, so, if you have counter rotating props, that's that's not an issue. Or if you're in a P-38, well, then both engines are critical the way they counter rotated. Yeah, so I did the, uh, you know, I flew the P-38. Really? Yeah, and uh, the Fagans P-38. And when I checked out in it, um, you didn't have to do the VMC demo or anything oh. like that. But I wanted to know what it was going to be like. And it's pretty high. It's like 135, right. as I remember. So um, what I did was I got up to altitude and then I set one engine in, uh, in the idle, the, the idle no thrust, which is 15 inches, 1500 RPM. Yeah. And I cobbed the power on the other one. And most airplanes, it's roll, you know, it's roll. And it, you know, like a B-25, it just yaws. But most airplanes, yeah. it's roll. And this one, um, it was, it's just, it's really violent. 
I mean, it just rolls you over and so mm -hmm. fast and you've got opposite controls and they're just totally mm -hmm. ineffective. And, and the airplane's just, it's done a, an aileron roll basically. And wow. So it's just, that's a, a P38, one engine at 15 and then you cob the power on the other 15 yeah. inches of the mantle. Wow. Yeah. Huh. And, uh, and they're huge props. I mean, I think, yeah. was it 13 foot? Or something? They're just outrageous. Yeah. So this is just a look at that, what I was talking about, you know, with the, uh, the roll due to yaw. Uh, this is going to yaw the airplane and you're going to get roll out of that. And you're going to have pop drag here. And that's, that's really all I wanted, I wanted to show that. The, uh, here's the Baron uh, plan view. And I tried to put in mass moments on there. Like this airplane would have felt Yeah, two huge bass moments off of two big engines. Exactly, and all the, the fuel, yeah. all the fuel is here on the wings. So, and then baggage or whatever direction you're going, uh, you're going to have it here. You're going to have people here, and this in this particular bearing, you had somebody else here. But the back seat's really close to the to the ax, the spin axis. Mm -hmm. So the the moment arm there is not huge, but it's still FCG, and then some of the baggage is going to be on the outside. I don't have any idea what they had in baggage. So this, this is the issue with the twin. Just look, remember in that F-104 with all those mass moments out there, the fuel and the engines here are what mess this up and uh, makes it totally different. And how they couple together is, uh, is the big issue. Mm -hmm. So, And even worse on the 310 with the tuna tanks, so your main tanks are the 50 gallons each on the wingtip. So, yeah, that barbell of uh, fuel out there is uh, that's a lot. That's a big mass movement out there. Yep. So, that being said, I'm going to show you what the F 15E recovery is to a spin. Now, the story on this is when I first started flying the airplane, uh, we had guys coming over from other airplanes. I did, I came from the F 4. Uh, we had some light gray guys, you know, you had F 111 guys. Uh, uh, people from, uh, I don't remember many F-16 guys, but all walks of life, we had some make 10 guys. And uh, this, uh, the airplane didn't have, what's different in Strike Eagle is, it's not the same as an F-15 A, B, C, or D. It's actually only about 5% the same, and the rest of it's completely different. One of those differences is the stabilator is a full flying uh, differential, and it's fly by wire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like the regular F-15 is not fly by wire, it's hydromechanical. And the A-15E has got hydromechanical, but the stabilator is fly by wire. And you can fly the airplane throughout its entire envelope. So if you want to roll, then that's how you roll. The stabilator does this. Mm -hmm. so, and um, it really makes it interesting trying to teach somebody refueling because they're gripping the stick like this, you know, next to the tanker. And the airplane's just going, what do you want me to do? <laughs> but... Uh, we lost two airplanes to F-15 light grade drivers because um, over 30 units of uh, AOA. And how is, is that degrees? I don't know. It's just units. That's how we talked mm -hmm. about it. Over 30 units, the ailerons wash out. So you don't get much uh, input. You don't get any real roll rate. You know, you add to your buffeting and you add to adverse yaw, right? Anytime you move an aileron, you're going to get adverse yaw. Few airplanes are, have, have that designed out of them, but not, not especially not this one. So we lost two airplanes. Two guys died, and in one airplane and the other one, they were able to, to jump out. So what they did was, is they said, "Okay, you guys can't fly over thirty units until we spin test it." Because McDonnell Douglas, when they designed the airplane and tested it, they did a spin program with the AMO, and then they said, "Okay," and it was very departure resistant, and they said. That was it for all subsequent models? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. But when they put a canopy, a dual seat canopy on it, <coughs> it, it changes. changes. Yeah. It changes change. everything. So what they did was is they rewrote the, the uh, flight control program, and it actually has sensors in it to tell you if uh, what the yaw rate is. So mm -hmm. when it goes uh, above a certain amount, it'll tell you that, hey, uh, I mean, it doesn't actually, yeah, I think it does actually tell you y'all right, but uh, it'll, it, what it does is it enables a couple of different things. And one of this is this, this recovery. 
So remember, we talked about in a left spin, if you put in left aileron, that's in spin aileron, it's an anti spin input, it's pro roll. Mm -hmm. And that's what this is right here. <coughs> All the displays display this is pro roll. And it says, do this with the throttles. This, so this is the outside engine, pull it to idle. This actually comes up on the display? All the what displays right here? Yeah, all the displays are replaced with the spin recovery really? huh. display. They call it the SRD. You got to have a, everything's an abbre abbreviation. So yeah, everything's replaced because if you don't fix this, you know, the airplane's not going to fly anymore. It's going to crash. <laughs> yeah, you give it back to the taxpayers. Yeah. So see what this shows you? Split throttles, man. Uh, yeah, but this is, again, folks, this is F-15 stuff. This is for discussion purposes only. We're not recommending this. I'm not. <laughs> Unless exactly. you want to be a test pilot. Uh, this is exactly. I'm not I'm not recommending it. I'm just saying that this actually works uh, in this airplane. In and it F has been tested. Yeah. I think they did 130 or 40 spins. Now, see, what about the boys at Beechcraft? They met and monkeyed around with all this different stuff, and it didn't work for them. I don't think they really uh, – no, it didn't work for them. Uh, but I think – We don't know how they, far they took it with these – I don't think that they ideas. really understood the mass moment issue mm. because, no, hardly anybody knows about mass moments and how they influence a spin. Nobody really talks about it, and that's that's why I'm wearing my Nomex today. So – you can take the heat from the from the peanut gallery. Exactly. <laughs> so it does have in spin, and you think about what's happening here. So we think of uh, uh, torque and P factor and all that stuff in a prop. Okay. So I'm here to tell you that you have torque in a jet engine. Yeah. And I've I've been in a in a, a really high angle of attack, nearly zero airspeed with mill power, and I think I did it once with burner. And you, you know, the airplane tries to rotate. It's mm -hmm. just like, just like torque from a prop. Mm -hmm. As those spinning in, you know, the spinning engine, the uh, the turbine blades in there, that, you know, they're they're moving pretty dang quick. Yeah. So there's a there's a lot of torque there. And Interesting. What they found was is that with the new flight control program, they couldn't spin it to do the spin tests. They had to put the old program in and had a mm -hmm. switch so they could depart the airplane in the old flight control program, go to the new one and recover. And when you say depart the airplane, you're saying the airplane, de it's a shorthand for saying the airplane departing controlled flight. Correct. Yeah. yeah. For me, when I say depart an airplane, that means that you at least get to the incipient phase. Of a He's not talking about jumping out of the airplane just yet. Yeah. You only jump out if you have to. Yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about uh, the uh, Baron. Um, and this is the actual accident airplane. Um, mm -hmm. So this is a great side shot. And what we want, what we're really interested in is uh, observing. So these are your engines. You can see where they are. And the mass moment is going to be right, the centroid the mass moment is going to be right about here. And uh, that's pretty dang far forward. When you think mm -hmm. about spin axis is back here. Mm -hmm. And uh, pretty good distance from the center line of it as well. So here's somebody sitting here. You can see the back seats. And then the baggage compartment is going to be after the spin axis. And all those things are going to couple in unpredictable ways. But middle, remember, idle neutral aft. So the, the relative wind... And I did this in the tufted video, that spin video I did with the uh, Bonanza. This is essentially the 55 Baron is the same fuselage as my aerobatic Bonanza. Mm -hmm. The rudder is different. The, the vertical uh, fin and the rudder is different, but everything else is pretty, pretty, pretty close to exactly the same. Mm -hmm. So, um, and it has a different wing on it to hang those engines on. So the relative wind in a spin is like this. So what I want yep. you to get out of that is, is how big the uh, horizontal is. And if it's just floating or if it's neutral, that leaves you just this little bitty corner mm -hmm. 
of the, the rotor, rotor with, yeah. exposed. And if you do idle neutral aft, you know, from the, P, the T37 spin recovery technique, idle neutral aft, even if you go full aft on the elevator, it's only going to be up here. It's going to expose just a little bit more of the rudder, but not much. Not yeah. anywhere near enough to counter that uh, this, the, the moments caused by those engines out on the wings. That's why a spin in a, in a Baron like this is uh, you're not going to recover. Not enough rudder. Simply not, not enough. enough. Yeah, if you just not. got that tiny little corner of the rudder to work with there yeah. um, versus all that moment arm of weight outboard on these wings yeah yeah and that's why that's why they don't spin test twins and uh, all of the spin recovery technique that beach publishes for this is the spin prevent because right. if you stop it right away yep that's your and, only chance and, you're you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna, you're gonna you're gonna fly away and you're gonna control the airplane and you're gonna be happy because if you let it go and you're gonna and it develops even a even a half a turn i think is too late why it's so important for dpes instructors uh, all of us to be not complacent doing these maneuvers i mean you are right on the edge of disaster and then that brings up the whole concept of well do we really need to continue this practice bleeding or should we just be doing this in a simulator or should we avoid the demonstration altogether in the actual airplane yeah i agree i mean this vmc is a it is a dangerous maneuver dark and, corner uh, man it is it's just like the impossible turn in a single engine airplane yeah yeah um i did mess around with this in a redbird simulator uh, here at the airport, uh, a Redbird Baron simulator, and um, it didn't quite, it didn't quite get the realistic uh, departure from controlled flight. In fact, in, in that particular Redbird, uh, it simulator, it departed in the direction of the rudder rather than in the direction <laughs> that the V engine. <laughs> yeah, so which tells me that they. The the uh, folks that wrote the software <clears throat> and the, the algorithm to do that, the, there's no data, so they don't even go there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, now I don't know what the Beach has done with their spin test data, but obviously they haven't shared it. And, well, there you go. There, all you young folks out there, you got to create this software that we can get it in the simulators to more accurately replicate this and and um, get a more accurate simulator representation of what this of what this these phenomenons are and and uh, so we can do it safely in the simulator with some some realism yeah when i approached that uh, vmc demo and uh so like i was saying when i when i taught in this and i don't fly it enough to be current so i don't teach in it anymore but um it uh, uh i was always spring-loaded you know i'm, I'm i would let the Student go and make a very maybe it's just a small mistake, maybe, but I'm going to recover it right away. Yeah, yeah got it. Because it's yeah. scary. Yeah, and the, and the the way that we're pushing students through the pipeline right now, I don't know if they have any idea of just how dangerous this maneuver is and how dark this envelope is that they're approaching, and um, and then the instructors probably don't have much spin training to begin with, uh, uh even to do a spin proper spin prevent, uh, in the first place. So we're putting putting our young folks in a very dangerous position here. What about up in Canada? Have they just given up on the VMCA demo altogether in Canada? You know, I don't know. I don't know about that, but I do know yeah. that they do spin training uh, for, uh, for private. Ah, uh, yeah. For private. Okay, yeah. Good. They still require that. So uh, I don't know uh, what See, they, that what might they... be a better prioritization of things, learn proper spin training and then skip the VMCA demo or, 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 or minimize it. But I mean, well, yeah. I think, I think if you learn proper spin training and uh, in particular that spin prevent, then you would save an enormous amount of lives. I mean, yeah. all the departures in a, uh, um, like an overshooting wind and a base to final turn and people are pulling and then they stall the airplane and it's over the top. If they're lucky, it's under the mm -hmm. bottom and they're dead. Mm -hmm. um, if they knew how to do a, a spin prevent, you know, unload coordinated roll out of it, the, then it would be non-event. You know, hmm. they might be, they might have lost three to 500, 600 feet, maybe, 
Uh, you'd have to catch uh, it awful quick. Yeah. yeah. If you if you catch it quick and you're you're you, but you can only you can't do that. I think, in my opinion, you can't do that from listening to this video. You know, no. you got to do it in an airplane. Yeah. Yeah. So. Hmm. Fascinating discussion. Yeah. So that was my that was my big stuff. So what do you think? You think I needed to wear my Nomex? <laughs> well, everybody seems to be approving uh, of the uh, material at hand so far. That's good. I haven't been, I've been too busy trying to make all this magic work. To... Hey, yeah, Richard here corrects me. Uh, in Canada, they have, is this correct, Richard? They have not um, gotten rid of the VMCA demo in Canada. All right. Spin training should have never been dropped. Yep. Canadian here. All right. Yeah, Richard, you're, yeah, you're doing that multi right now. Good. Hey, Hacker, you're right. Spin training should never have been dropped from the private ACS to begin with. And by the way, don't you owe me a phone call? <laughs> now, Mal 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 Malachi Ruddy here says, I'm from Canada, just did my multi. I never had to do a VMC demo, but I have been doing spins as long as I've been flying. Interesting, see? Hmm. I would love to know the stats of accidents because that's why the FAA dropped it is because People were crashing airplanes and spins instead of they weren't doing them right and they were crashing. So, okay, student uh, Ty says he's a student here in Canada. Lots of spin install training during his private training. Good, good. All right. <laughs> All right, hacker. Excuses, excuses. <laughs> I don't know about that. Let's see. What's the best altitude to do a VMCA demo? As high as you can get. Yeah, really. Demo I would say above five. I would say eight, ten thousand feet. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. But remember, the higher you go, uh, that other chart uh, that's brought up in the very back of the book. There, you're you're getting oh, yeah. deeper into the dark side of the envelope there because your stall speed is going to remain the same, but your VMCA is going to continue to get lower and lower and lower because you're producing on a naturally aspirated engine, less and less thrust. So yeah. you're putting yourself in a, in an even darker corner, the higher you go as far as VMCA goes, but you're giving yourself more room to recover. Another reason to block, have the instructor block that rudder. So you don't go, go too far with this. Yeah. So I don't know, you know, the, uh, uh, as I remember the FAA changed the ACS for stalls itself and you don't do full stalls anymore. Um, you do yeah, you don't even do full stalls anymore. Yeah. You do approach to stalls. Oh. It's been a while since I read it, but that's what I remember of the change. Coupling. Oh, there's a couple of questions on coupling. We kind of co covered it, but Scott, can you explain in a hundred words or less for example, roll coupling or yaw coupling. It's sure. when you couple a rolling motion with a yawing motion at the same time. That's the way yeah. I understand. So it. let me pull this back up, the F-104, because it's uh, it's really cool. And if you, <laughs> one of the, one of the forbidden um, maneuvers in the T-38 was, uh, as I recall, and my buddy Stratton, the first thing he did on a solo was tried it. The book said, don't do full aileron aileron rolls continuously. Don't just yank the aileron all the way over there in a T-38, which is not too different than this aircraft, and keep it there because of roll coupling. So the airplane will start rolling like crazy, but then it'll start coupling with yaw, and you can induce a, an entire tumbling motion. That's exactly right, and the wings will come off. Yeah, you'll pull the wings right off. Yeah, because I mean, they're, they're it's a strong airplane, but only in one direction. Um, uh, so then, in the T thirty eight, as I remember, it's been quite a few. It's been a few minutes since I've flown one, but as I remember, yeah. the roll rate on that airplane, full stick, is in the neighborhood of seven hundred twenty degrees a second. Yeah, it's incredibly fast. Yeah, so half stick uh, limit is is about you know I think we were limited to three quarter stick, so that's you know somewhere around four hundred. 400 to you know 500 feet uh, or degrees per second that's pretty quick but what happens is, is i think you give a pretty good definition of it is you know as you go through uh the turn 
you still got one G on it. So one G like this, you're pulling and pulling and you're pulling down and up and sideways. So after a while, that roll coupling starts to happen and the airplane does this, nutates, the nose nutates around the roll. So it doesn't make a roll. Nice perfect. axial roll, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't make it right down the axis. It's that nose is actually nutating and that's creating a huge amount of G. So all these different things, if you think of their moment arm from the spin axis is it's gonna have a different uh, influence on the entire airplane because it's all connected at the moment. Uh, it's gonna like when it's rolling like this and these are causing roll, this is causing yaw, they couple together and then they will affect these mass moments out here and they will pitch up because these are rolling this way and that's what's causing that oscillation up and down. And, uh, the, and you can't predict that, you know, yeah. you can't fly that. And so uh, when it's when it's fully coupled and it's a bear and there's just not enough, as we saw in the video, there's not enough elevator or no stabilator in this case to affect the pitch. Yep. So hopefully that answered that question. Yeah, I think so. What else? I don't see anything else I see. All right. Don't see anything else popping out right there. Let's see if there's anything at the bottom of the list there. Very good. Yeah. I like Ty saying, uh, doing a falling leaf. When I teach aerobatics, that's what I do. One of the first maneuvers we're going to learn how to do is a falling leaf. Yeah. And it's full stall. Uh, full aft stick and you, you keep, use the rudder to keep the airplane from falling off and yaw and spinning and yep. uh, it works really well and that's how you do it is you pick it up with the rudder you learn what and your feet are it, for and keep them at ailerons neutral yeah exactly cool but again it's just natural human reaction uh, if something startles you and a wing drops suddenly the human in you is just going to throw the aileron in there to try to stop the stop that but like we discussed earlier that just adds yaw and that just adds uh pro oh, yeah. spin control here hacker he was uh he was a 38 ip and uh continuous ailerons in the 38 more than one complete roll will be accomplished at only one g and three quarters or less stick yeah Stratton's right on his first solo. He just, everything went crazy and he just stopped right away. <laughs> Don't do that. ATP check ride. Um, why would they be doing, there's no requirement to do any kind of stall in an ATP uh, in a bearing. Any of that. It's basically, a, I don't think it is. Been a while, been a minute since I've done uh, that. Too. Have to look at the ACS on that. Yeah. All right. Well, excellent discussion. Thanks. Thought that was a pretty good cover of that. Yeah. Uh, do as we say, not as we do. Or read the book. Do what the book says. This is just for discussion purposes only. <laughs> <laughs> Disclaimer. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, you you be a test pilot at your own risk frankly yeah yeah this yep yeah so dark corners of the twin engine spin profile yeah exactly don't try them because they're because yeah, you don't have a uh, uh a drug a drug shoot to pop out yep. i knew a guy in the f4 um so part of that recovery issue was to pop the uh, drug shoot mm -hmm. if you've uh, departed the airplane the, the main recovery for departure was an unload. And, and basically you say that unload for control, you know, and it's a nose heavy airplane. So eventually it's going to go head straight down and then you get some airspeed and it recovers. So one time I was letting my backseater do a, uh, a loop, you know, and uh, like mm -hmm. the 38, it took about 10,000 feet to do it. Yeah. 
Yeah, and you got to be at 500, 500 knots. You know, yeah. it's a 5G or better maneuver. And it looks like this. <laughs> yeah, it's just, yeah, it's exactly what it is. And so I'm letting him do it, and uh, he's pulling three, and I'm saying, uh, I'm saying, pull five, pull five, pull harder, 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 harder. I got the airplane, and we're just like that, going straight up. And that's what I did is I just unloaded for control. <laughs> and it went, uh, and then it's pointing downhill. And uh, you could fly out. There you go. Reattach the airflow and on your way. Yeah. Oh, boy. That's because we had a lot of altitude. I had another, right. another buddy. Uh, hopefully, he's not watching this. But uh, he, he departed the airplane. And he flew it below 10,000 feet, popped the chute, and recovered. Hmm. And flew home. Mm -hmm. So the problem with that is, is that 10,000 feet was the, uh, if you're not out of control at 10,000 feet. You're sort of, supposed to depart the aircraft. <laughs> yeah, you pull the handles. Yeah. You, you eject and give the airplane back to the taxpayers and so on. So he comes back and he's dragging a chute and he didn't use it for landing. So he got, he got in a lot of trouble. You know, <laughs> he saved the airplane, but at the risk of his life. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. Very good. So cool. Any other questions? I think that's it. I put my glass. All right. I think we've done an hour or a bit. So uh, probably ought to call an end to it. But I enjoyed it. Yeah. That was a fantastic discussion. Let's do it again. All right. So that's BS Works number five, flat spins and twins. So appreciate it and uh, eventually i'll hopefully in a day or two i'll get this posted on youtube i think it saves it as a live stream anyway but uh i'll redo it on recording it so yeah yeah post this for posterity on your channel there yeah all right, all right. very good we'll keep you posted on 737 updates as they come in hot and heavy on the blanco lirio channel so stay tuned all right ciao see ya <laughs>